so here we are, West Sac Cycle Cross Race, Orange Hill Park, Saturday, last Saturday, it's now Thursday night. Finally getting into this breakdown, it's been a long week. <laughs> it's been really hard to sit down for 43 minutes to do a race breakdown. So I hope you guys actually enjoy it. Um, right out the gate, I'm, I started out dead last and it's not super easy to move up. There's a lot of openings right here, but I'm uh, still kind of like figuring out how to accelerate in the grass. Riding in the grass is a little different. We didn't have a whole lot of grass in the other races, just a little bit. There was a lot of soft mud in the grass also, as you can see here. So it was really hard, you would think, to pick the line where you could see the most tire tracks, but actually it was really mushy right there, and I found that if I went around that, yeah, I got a lot more traction. Just passed one of the freak show dudes. They came out from Lodi right here, just gained a little bit. But then right here, it's a complete 180, so I kind of got stuck by going around the outside, but it wasn't too bad. Um, this one kid right here on the right in the matching kit just came around me, but I'm right here on him. And as I go into the next turn, I start to pass a few dudes as well. So, making my way to the front, a quarter of the first lap in. This race was super long, it felt like. I believe it was like six laps. It was pretty intense, but it was a super rad course. Going over the hurdles here, trying to be as smooth as possible, dismount and mounting back. And as we go around this turn here, we're gonna enter like the, the horse stables or the rodeo ground, which is sand. So trying to pass right here, I tried to do on this first lap. Not really the best thing because it's packed right here in front of me from all the people riding through. They were going through and raking that as we like, in between races and so going into the soft stuff wasn't very efficient at all you just dug into it and like lost control but um, I learned that after the first lap and luckily it didn't cost me the race <laughs> so um, on to the hard stuff and then I'm trying to get past a couple of guys here I noticed that this guy's falling off of the group and I was like there's no way like I'm going for it so I just decided to go by myself and make up all this ground it's a little soft in here, but I went on the right-hand side because it was really hard. And up and around, another right turn, and then we do a couple of like uh, 180 U-turns. This section wasn't bad at all. It was pretty cool. Um, if you took it wide, you'd go into the fence a little bit, but um, most of the time I was fine. I never really went too wide. And then after you turn right, right here, you can kind of just like open it up and get some acceleration going. This next turn's not super sharp, so just coasting through it, or you could even pedal through it. Same thing with this turn. And then you make your way over here. This turn, you just hit the brake a little bit, but I learned as I went through the race, I was super smooth and barely used any brake and was just able to take this whole thing and come out of this thing accelerating, which was a huge help later in the race because then I noticed how efficient I was being leaving the people that were trying to battle it out with me behind. Just passed another dude. Really trying to make some gains here on this race. I just, I, I really wanna like win a race. Like I have the, like, the hunger to win a race. And I'm really excited that I have that like stoke again to like really be competitive with myself while being competitive with others. <laughs> I lost that for a long time because I was working so much and I couldn't compete, you know? And so this is all new to me, and it's, it's really fun. So up here, we're going through, we got Robert Martinez on the right, because I'll give him a little like motivational push. Come around this turn, and then we are dismounting, and we're going up the stairs. I was told you could ride up these stairs. I tried in the first like pre-lap, didn't really work out. I hit my front tire, I thought I was gonna like blow my tire. I just decided to run up it. I actually ran up, I'm really smooth, and I was, dis I was mounting back very smoothly come around this turn, get past this dude. There's a huge gap. I'm just really trying to close gaps. So basically I'm in a 43 minute time trial. Stats for this race, I averaged 286 watts for 43 minutes. That's not like an insane amount of, of watts, but for 43 minutes, that's, I feel like that's plenty. Um, sure, you, people can do more, that's great. But 286 watts, is a I'd say a pretty substantial amount especially for not going out and training I still to this day have not went out and did a training ride where I watch my watts and try to like 
do an FTP. I literally just ride by feel, my Garmin's on sleep mode, and I look at the numbers afterwards, I'm like, oh, whoa, man, yeah, you're getting gains. So that's what I do with these races too, especially in races. You don't look at your power meter when you're in a race. You just, you ride by feel. That's how you're supposed to ride. But I get it, if you're trying to hit numbers and you're really focused on numbers, you can get numbers and it's like a carrot you're chasing. But um, unless I go do a KOM and I'm like, oh wow, I averaged 380 watts for you know 10 minutes. I need to go out and do 410 watts and maybe I'll go and watch it on a hill climb. But until then, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be doing it, but we'll see. So here we go onto the back side. My car's parked over here to the left. Actually, you can see it, the red car over there on the left. That's my car <laughs> on the left of the bathroom. Uh, pretty good spot, actually. I got lucky enough to get it. Um, this is a really cool section. I like this spot. It wasn't too bad. I seen a couple people slip out. And then we'd make an immediate left turn and we go over this bridge. So in my edit, I literally just, because it was all raw, I just used the clip of the full bridge edit and then cut it. it was, I love the sound. It's like, pretty cool. This section was pretty dope too. There was some really smooth laps for me. I feel like this lap specifically through this run was good. Um, but I had some other ones that just didn't feel as smooth. But um, it's all about choosing your line and knowing where you're riding. These guys are doing pretty good. Oh, we weren't going super hard, so I really like used a higher cadence here, not using a lot of the muscle in my legs. And I saved that for the grass because you're really feeling it in the grassier areas compared to this. Nice and quick here, just hitting the lines, you know, trying to be comfortable with what like I'm riding and you know, being in the saddle. That little spot was hard when you had people in front of you because they would kind of like lose control. But if you're by yourself, you could not use the brakes as much and just go up that soft sand and just like roll right up it. This turn specifically, when you use the brake slot, you go really, really wide. As opposed to like using the brake a little before and just like going through the turn and start accelerating early in the turn. Really awesome. Hammering here, this is my hammer spot. But I learned, as you'll see later in the race, I'm riding on the left side right now. I found that if I ride the wall, if I rode the gate on the right, it was super hard and not loose. And I just used a, like a high cadence and just really like powered through it. Man, I was gaining tremendously in that section. But it took a few laps to learn that. But that's all, what it's all about, you know, racing, getting experience and um, changing your uh, tactics, you know? So I just passed a few dudes going through lap number two, 7.45 in. We got this dude right here, kind of chilling for a second. I was kind of feeling it because I hit it pretty hard. So we got this guy right here, he's on a canyon with freaking zips, with matching bar tape, pretty dope setup. I was admiring it at the start line. I love my bike, but he had a dope bike too. Those canyons look pretty nice for the cross bikes. I'm surprised uh, Vegan Cyclist hasn't gotten a canyon cross bike yet. We'll see, who knows. Be really cool to get him out on some gravel rides though. <laughs> uh, speaking of bikes, as I go into this next thing, hurdles. Lately, I've just noticed, like, I love going out and riding my gravel bike as a road bike. It's great. But I go through my rear tire quite fast. You know, riding road on knobs. It's making me wonder. Lately, I've been getting, like, personal records. And um, I've gotten a couple KOMs on my gravel bike on the road. <laughs> and I've gotten some second fastest times on times that I haven't set since like 2014 climbing a mountain on the road and I'm like wondering man this bike's three and a half pounds heavier than my road bike and imagine if I had if I went out on my road bike I wonder if I can go steal some KOMs or definitely destroy my time because my bike's three and a half pounds lighter and it's smoother and more efficient on the road I think it'd be kind of fun to go out and do a, a, a ride on my road bike before I sell it I am selling my road bike, by the way, so if anybody's watching right now, I'm selling the Engine 11 Skyline. Uh, fully equipped, Richie carbon seat post, Richie saddle, carbon Richie stem, sorry, aluminum stem with the carbon bars, the Richie Logic bars, the Super Logic bars, they're amazing. Super rad Richie cockpit. I got 2017. Uh, Voltega group set 11 speed with the 2018 Durace 175 millimeter cranks with Mavic Open Pro training wheels 32 spoke with an 1136 cassette on the back 
and it's a 5034 compact Durace crankset, which is awesome. Bike's in great condition, super light. Uh, if you're interested and you're actually watching it 10 minutes into the video, DM me on Instagram and uh, if you're really, really interested. If you can ride a 58 centimeter road bike, it's a little small for me, but if you're 5'10 to 6'2, it's yours if the price is right. But um, if you're really interested, reach out to me and uh, we can talk about pricing and see what you're working with. But um, just thought I'd throw that out there. I've been wanting to talk about it, but maybe I'll take it out for a spin this week and show it off. LaCroix boys. Yeah. Much needed during a race breakdown. Good thing I brought a couple of them. <laughs> Alright, so here's this guy on the canyon again. Sorry I went off on that little rant, but um, dude passed me up a little bit. I think I was feeling it at this point. We're 10 minutes in and I was going pretty hard. It'd be kind of cool to actually like set up laps in a second cross race so I could see what I do every lap and kind of compare them, that'd be really fun. Um, super smooth up the steps. I noticed that if some guys pass me a little bit, I would accelerate out and pass them. Right here, that's not the case, but I don't know who this guy is right here. But I'm like following these dudes for a little bit and they're like hitting it, but it looks like they're like getting tired. And that was the one thing that I noticed is like, I would be like, oh, these guys are like ditching me and they would do like a spurt, but then they would kind of like gas out and then I would end up passing them. And I think that just comes from me doing those like big adventure rides because I don't do a lot of high intensity stuff and I should, and I want to work on that leading up to my next race in a few weeks at the Langton's Winery. But I have a huge endurance engine and I do, you know, three to eight hour rides and I haven't done any eight hour rides lately but this next week I plan on doing at least a five hour ride with my best friend Mr. Travis Lee on the road bikes and um, I'm gonna do a couple of gravel rides uh, one on Monday and one on Tuesday and uh, then kind of chill for the rest of the week but I want to make Monday Tuesday Wednesday like big days or like really solid quality days so like if Tuesday's short I'm gonna go out and do some intervals in the middle of my ride so that I can bring up the heart rate and then recover, but I wanna to try to like do them like really close together so then I can deal with guys that are 21 years old, you know, like just freaking machine, you know? They're just like rolling up to the race super fresh and you know, I'm over here like working and tired and riding to the race and stuff. But um, I like riding to the race. I find that I'm actually warmed up when I get to the race. Just, I was really tired last night at the race. But we'll talk about those results on the race breakdown. So I'm sitting here with these dudes. I'm here with the Canyon guy and the other dude in the orange. And we're gonna go to the back dirt section. This is still the second lap of six. I know you're all hating me already. Do the race breakdowns, do the race breakdowns. Six laps, what the hell? <laughs> That's okay, all you have to do is <laughs> close the window browser. But um, I mean, yeah, we're, I mean, this is nonstop. We're hitting it hard. There was times where it felt way easier than others because I just utilized my gears and like had a higher cadence. Like through this section, I would ride a high cadence. I wouldn't be burning up my legs. My muscles wouldn't be hurting. I would just be like catching my breath and spinning a high cadence and kind of just like pumping through this. It's like super flowy. So that was really cool. Um, the same little section right here. See, that was like decently smooth. That guy took it pretty well. We'll have to find a time when someone didn't. I'm pretty sure it was a couple of times. But uh, see how the orange guy, he kind of like probably uses his brake a lot and he went super wide. So here I come on the inside and I start accelerating. I don't know if I pass him, I think I do. Um, because I think I pass this guy too. So this guy's like muscling it. He's like pumping it out. Probably strong dude, but he's like, he's, he's muscling out a big gear. If he had a little bit of a higher cadence, he would have accelerated better. See how the Canyon dude, he's like accelerating. Oh, here we go. Here we go, this dude right here on the Yeti. The guy, you guys remember the guy on the Yeti from the first rodeo cross breakdown, crushing it. So last night we had a battle and I can't wait to share it with you guys. I hope it came out well, because it was pretty dark last night. Wow, we really battled it out last night. He crashed like three times, never gave up, but I'm gonna save the end for the race breakdown. But mad props to uh, Team Cry now, because uh, he really uh, 
brought the competition last night and we battled it out for sure. Oh man. So we're going lap three, heading into the grass, and we actually ride together for a little while. I think he probably is feeling his last effort. It seems like he's getting a little uh, tired, but he, he's not out yet. So he's right here, I'm with him. We're riding. And it's like these little like spots right here where I definitely don't try to go super hard because you have to kind of just slow down to take the next turn. So I try to be as efficient as possible. And then when it's on big, huge, like wide open spots, I try to like open it up and like go because that for me is most efficient. Here we go. I wanted to really bunny hop those barriers. There was a couple people that did bunny hop them, but nobody really in our race was doing it. But I seen some really, really young junior kids doing it. So here we go, into the dirt section. This wasn't really a spot for me to like pass. I always just try to be patient and I knew that nobody was really gonna go around me so I just would try to follow these dudes around and not crash like the guy up ahead. And see how this guy kinda just came unclipped and then he started getting squiggly and then I would just try to literally like open it up here and accelerate past. So these guys are doing pretty good right now actually, but I just knew that I was getting a little behind so I couldn't let them get away. So here we go, I'm gonna start go over on the right hand side. Just get on this guy's wheel as you guys aren't getting away. This is four places right here that I can move up. And so I'm just trying to like stay with them so I can plan out my move. This guy's getting real like tired. It looks like he's really muscling out the gear but that might be what he's used to. But it just looks <laughs> brutal in the grass. Riding through that grass with a big gear, just muscling it, just, it hurts after a while. So they got a little bit of a gap here. And I'm just sitting here with these dudes, kind of just riding for a minute. These are, these are times when I probably could have just been smarter and like went really hard. But then we go around the turn here, you know, and like, I'm still with them, but I probably could have just like hammered it and went past them, but I don't know how much harder I could have hammered it and sustained it. So then therefore I would have gotten dropped, you know, they would have caught back to me. So I was always trying to like best judge my performance and go as hard as I could in the times when it was appropriate so that I could do it. So this guy got a little squiggly and I'm just like, man, I should really try to pass him. It didn't happen right there. But I got the other dude, and we're gonna go into this dirt section. So with this dirt section up here, I noticed that I could use the brake less here and then ride up this without any brake. And it slows you down already naturally, but you don't use brake, so you're, it's kind of smoother. And then um, we're heading into the back where we're gonna run up the steps after we go around this UE. So we got the dude on the canyon, we got the Yeti, I love that Yeti, it's so dope. Up the stairs, super smooth. And here we go. So I decided to try to go for it this time, I'm not sure if I make it, but I get by. And then I decided to go for him too. And I see this guy trying to get away and I'm like, dude, I'm gonna go for this guy. This is my time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hammer it here because I want to move up. So I got three dudes. Took that turn super smooth, got this one, and then this uh, hard right here. It was really hard to judge, but I feel like I started getting it pretty good. Really just trying to like stay, like dig into that and then take the turn tight and accelerate good out of it. So I was getting to where I was accelerating pretty good out of this turn to where I just like go through and then there we go, bam. Now I'm moving. And this is where after the next like three laps, like I got faster and faster on this section and I started taking this left turn, dipping down into the tree and just flying into the section, taking this turn with barely any brakes, hitting the brake and then flowing through this turn and accelerating out and just doing better every time. But here's this dude. So we're like, we battled it out this race. And that's why I think last night's race was so intense because he wanted redemption. I don't want to give it away too much, but uh, back to this race, <laughs> here we are. And you know, we're just making moves and from us being competitive, 
we're going faster and we're not getting past we're passing everybody else so you know starting dead last i have no idea what place i'm in and so it's like a mystery i'm just like going hard and i just keep picking people off and i'm like okay where are we going <sighs> but uh so we're going in this next section the right turn people get a little slippery he rode it really smooth super good i know uh, somebody went i don't know if somebody went down but like slipped out pretty hard that tried to pass it wasn't him uh, because we take this dirt section, I'm just kind of like, you know, riding it how I would, and I'm admiring how well he is of a rider. Dude's got experience. Super strong rider, also. I'm spacing on his name right now. I'm really tired. <laughs> but um, I really want to knock this video out because I got some really exciting videos to share with you guys. On Monday, I did the dopest ride. It was the Dirty Summit ride. So I did gravel all the way to the top of Mount Diablo, and it was epic. And I, I rode with uh, Mike Stewart, Giant Rep, and Dave from 615 Cyclery in Danville, and it was super dope. We did 3,600 feet of gravel climbing in six miles, and it was a 20 mile ride total, so barely two hours. It was super rad. But I want to share that vlog with you guys. <laughs> but I got to get this one out first because this 48 minute of video <laughs> is like taking up my computer space, and I want to get this one out first. <laughs> But um, yeah, rad. So here we go on that, that power stretch. So let's see if I take the right side this time. So I'm like not so close. Actually, I wanted to go around him, so I passed him. I think I said good job. But um, here's another guy. So every time you pass someone, if you're moving, there's another guy, unless you're in the front. And uh, sometimes, you know, if you're in the front, it pushes you to stay away. But um, I haven't really gotten that feeling yet. Not in this race anyways. So I'm just like trying to move forward and like as I go through that back turn back there, I got Freak Show, Lodi, Michael David Winery cheering me on. I got John Franz cheering oh, me on, super match. dope, and All he right. realized he was there. I, I know people in the, in the stance, they're like yelling, go Sean, go Sean, it's right. really cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But um, on to this dude, just making my way to him, trying not to like gas out. This, this area wasn't super bad, it was like decently dry, but you could feel it in the grass, you're like hammering it through. I believe this is a Rio Strada guy. Not quite sure who it is. We got Tony right here on the left with his doggy, yelling out sandbag slurs. It's a super dope trek though. Isn't that a dope bike? High vis green, pretty rad. Well, I'm gonna go on the inside though. And then we got this dude right here. We got another guy. Not sure who that is, but I decided to go on the left. Look at he's is an Audi rider. Oh, Stumptown, Stumptown Coffee. Maybe he's on the Masters team. I don't know. I think this guy might be on the Masters team because like the uh, Stumptown Coffee. I think that's like a Masters team. So they started in the race before us. So technically, I'd be passing the race ahead of ours. But uh, just decided to stay right behind him. And this might be the guy that goes down. I'm not sure. Somebody went down in front of me, and I think it's because he was taking pictures right here. Oh, he got close to going down. Okay, I remember somebody got squiggly. <laughs> but uh, I know that one guy went down way ahead of us. But uh, yeah, so this guy got squiggly. He accelerated a little bit out of the turn. It's okay. I had to find my groove. And so we're making our way into our next section of grass. I mean, dude, we're just going. Like... I hope you guys, I, I wanna, I'm gonna actually look and see how many people are watching these videos throughout the whole thing because I just can't see somebody sitting through a 43 minute race because I feel like this would be so boring. I lived it. My heart was pumping. I was just like over the top, like full Sylvester Stallone and uh, man, it's really hitting it. I just wish I had a trucker hat right now so I could just, you know, that's what I mean business. But uh. Yeah, so this guy's still ahead, and I uh, definitely haven't pulled a uh, truck driver on him at all because I'm still behind him, but I'm creeping up, and I'm planning my move. This is where I, I started getting comfortable in these lanes. I'm taking the right of the mud, then I went on the inside of the mud, and, you know, I'm taking my lines right, and then this turn I stopped, I stopped using the brakes as much, and I'm just coasting through it, and I'm pedaling through it, and I'm just coming through. Look how smooth I came through, right on the wall, and decided to start, like, accelerating. So I'm coming up on him. I'm not quite sure if I get him right here or I have to wait until the next set of turns, but he's moving actually right now. 
So he's going. It's a good. It's a good chase. We got another dude up here. Here comes another guy. So go through this turn, and then bam, here we go. I actually go around him because he slowed down a lot, and I wasn't expecting it. So it was kind of my fault because I had to stop a lot. But there he is. Oh, and then <laughs> this guy. He's been sitting on my wheel. He wants it bad. You gotta. You gotta admire his hunger because he fucking wants it. That time I actually went a little wide and then he starts accelerating away. I was like, oh shit, there he goes. So I passed a few dudes and he like went for it. You know, he's like, no, I want to take it now. This is my race. You and my house. All right, up the stairs. Yeah, there's Brian Wagner filming me through on his Instagram story. <laughs> Super stoked. It's always cool when you get done with a race and you got like, you're on like four people's stories on Instagram. You're like, oh, that's what it, that's what I look like when I'm racing. <laughs> because you know this first person stuff is like, I don't know. I feel like it'd be really cool if someone came out and filmed with a drone and then shot video along the sidelines in different spots, and we made a video of it and then like talked about it. I don't know. It'd be cool, at least for a montage <laughs> at the beginning or end of the video. So it was like a bonus. If you watch the race breakdown, then you get a montage at the end. <laughs> a more cinematic aspect of the race. But um, I guess in reality you get like the full on nitty gritty of the race when you're watching it like this. And if you're willing to sit through it, then hey, that's cool. I mean, I lived it, so I don't need to sit and watch the whole race, but uh, I do it for you guys. Cause you know, I never got to do these like race videos because like in the past whenever I'd use a GoPro at a race it would like error on me or it just like would die and I couldn't get a whole race but I mean the new GoPros work really well and I'm like super grateful to have one and um, you know I plan on hopefully purchasing the new 7 which is like inside stabilization so I could have this 6 and the 7 and have two cameras because I'd love to have a back camera too so we could switch back and forth that'd be really cool Especially when I'm going at it with this dude. I gotta go out and ride with this dude. Look how this dude right here, I totally forgot. He went down right there, but look how he got up and saved it. And then I'm like coming up and I'm like, dude, nice save. Super good. The guy wants it. And he wants it so bad that he's going down, but he's like getting back up because he's not taking no for an answer. I like it. Really dope. So uh, this is my friend Crystal's boyfriend. And uh, his name, Sh I think his name is, Sh holy shit, I think his name's Sean too, no way. I think it is Sean, oh my god. I think it's coming back to me, it's crazy. But uh, super rad dude, uh, Crystal, super rad girl, used to work a hook and ladder with her. She has a dope squid bike with the snails and the band-aids. Super tall African girl, like bleach blonde hair. Super great seamstress. So this is her jersey that she made. And it's got like uh, clothespins and it says like Team Cry Now. And uh, I actually have a scarf that she made me for my birthday a couple years ago, which is really cool and I wear it when it's cold. And it's the only scarf I have and I'll wear it for a long time. But um, so that time right there in the dirt, we got stuck. And he got, he had slowed down a little bit so I had to hit my brakes. But uh, in, these, in this turn right here, I really tried to just like make it as smooth as possible so I can accelerate out and just go. That was like one of the spots where I was like, you're getting better, you're getting better. So uh, right side of the line, just hammering it. Hammer, hammer, hammer on the right, out of the soft stuff, just going along the line. You got the Williams tape. Williams out of Lodi, California. Uh, used to be sponsored by those dudes. Had some of their products, had some wheels, had the cockpit, super good stuff, carbon. It's legit. They're an official sponsor of USA Cycling. So shout out to Williams. Keith Williams, pretty rad dude. Thanks for the support, dude. Here we go. All right, let's see what we got here. We got two more laps left. Two more laps left. Two. Two to go. So we haven't seen anybody in a while. It's been me and I'm pretty sure his name's Sean, but it's been us two going back and forth since a half a lap. We got the folks watching here. I'm just going around. I'm like, dude, where is everybody? I'm feeling it. You got the A-Main van over there. They're filming with the drone. I was trying to get some drone footage of the race. Uh, maybe I can get some. And then we got this Davis dude right here. 
came out of nowhere. We passed him a little earlier. And, uh, yeah. So he, he gets in front of me a little bit. I forgot about him coming up. And, uh, yeah, I'm kind of just sitting with him for a little bit. I'm like, oh, where'd this guy come from? I don't know where he's from. But, uh, I decided to go on the right-hand side. Hit the hurdles. And yeah, nice and smooth, bam, hopped on. And going around the turn. And, uh, first one in the dirt. So, uh, I mean, he's still there. It's not like I, like, left him or anything, but... Oh, man. Yeah, this section right here. I think I got a little squiggly there. I think my back tire might have hit the softy. But um, I was going pretty fast through this because I was by myself. Nobody was in front of me finally. And that guy was behind me and I was like, no way someone's going to pass me. Like, where'd he come from? So I'm really just trying to, like, hammer it right now because, yeah, I haven't gotten past all race. I've been going back and forth, but I've been doing the passing. It's my job. <laughs> so we got some dudes up here. Here we go, some new dudes. I decided to go right to the dirt, take the line. And I'm going. I'm taking everything tight because if there's somebody behind me, they're going to have to go around. They're going to have to work the extra mile to get around, you know? So I think on this turn right here, I might take it a little wide. But I think she's fixing the, yeah, she's fixing the tape. But I still would have been good. So right here, I think this is Antonio. You guys all know Antonio. This is my buddy Antonio. He started in the Masters race. 35 plus. So when I catch him right here, he's like, Remy, there's only two more guys ahead of you. Go, go, go. And I was like, there's no way. I started dead last. He's like, no, there's only two more. You guys need to, you need to go. So I just like, cool. And so I just started hitting it. So I take this turn super wide, just pedaling through the whole turn. And I just decided to accelerate right here and go. And it doesn't look like there's anybody behind me with a shadow, but I'm pretty sure that there's somebody on my tail. I don't know where Sean's at. I'm not sure if he dropped off yet, but I remember looking back at one point and he was just gone. But, uh... This section, that was probably one of the smoother times. I went wide on that right there to get a better uh, push. There's some guys up here, but I think they're all from the other race. Like, I don't remember ever seeing first and second place in this race. I just uh, remember like coming up to people that were in the other races and passing them like this dude's chilling. And so I know like when you go around these people you just gotta be careful, you gotta let them know you're there because you don't want it to, excuse me, you don't want it to interfere with your race. Super smooth on the inside, bam, here we go. Let's start hammering it. I'm all alone, there's nobody in front of me. Take the inside, take the wall. You're riding every turn on the wall. And then that's just the line, you know? And if somebody wants to pass you, they're gonna have to take the longer line, which is around. They might have to go harder, but they gotta work harder to get around you. Because if you're taking the best line possible, it's gonna be harder for them to get around. Taking that turn, I was taking it without that turn super fast. Just really getting comfortable with the course. <laughs> five laps in but uh yeah and then this one like that that turn was way better and then around bam that was probably like my best one unless i do it better on the last lap but that one was good and then here i come accelerating out and at one of these points i remember seeing art out on the course and i think it's on the last one but right here i wasn't sure if my camera was dirty because we've been racing through mud and stuff so i try to wipe it off flying through this no brakes slam here and then around and just pedal through. It's, I just got way smoother. I started taking it way faster and realized that I didn't need to use so much brake. And you know, you don't know any better if you don't have experience. I don't have a lot of experience. I think I've done like five races total. These races are always different. And if you don't ride a course, and you're not familiar with it. It's not like when you go do a, a road race over and over, you know? Uh, These races, they change them all the time and they're always at different spots. So like this next year, this race could be set up different, <laughs> somewhat similar, Antonio's but it's probably gonna be different. And the train's gonna be different because it could be raining more next year. We've had a really dry year. <laughs> I was surprised to see this much mud. I don't know if they like sprayed the course beforehand, but coming down over the bridge, 
and through the dirt section. Deck. <laughs> through the dirt section. But, uh. Man, all alone. And I, I, there might be somebody on my wheel, but I don't think there's anybody behind me. I think the dude on the canyon, like, is, like, behind me for some reason. Because he commented on Instagram and said that I barely got him by a wheel. But I remember looking back and there was somebody, like, on my wheel. And they're like, hold him off, Remy, you gotta hold him off on the last lap. And I just, like, powered it out after the turn, which I'll show you in. And then just nobody came around me, but... Oh, man. 35 minutes in. LaCroix number two. Oh yeah, McCoy boys. Here we go, breakless turn. Going for it. Who's this dude? Hammering right here. Just coming out of the dust into the wind. All right, on the on the line right here. So I, this is my thing, dude. I, it looks like I'm gonna hit the fence with my handlebar, but like I'm just hitting. You could read the Williams on the tape. This was my line. I found it. I was like, man, that's this is your your fast spot right here. This is your line. You know, I didn't see anybody really doing it. I just tried it once and I was like, you know, that's way better. And then coming around this, it was good. You got all the dudes yelling at you. Coming back down, one to go. One lap of racing left remaining. Here we go. Not sure who that dude is, but he could have been in our race or we could have laughed him, I don't know. 36 minutes into a 43 minute race, man. Hammering it, I know it's the last lap, I'm trying to give it everything I have. And I'm feeling it. I remember racing right there and the dude on the orange bike, I thought it was Damien. And I was like, what's he doing here? I thought he was in Canada. <laughs> he was at the Red Bull Rampage, living it up. But uh, with nobody here, look, you can just take these. It's cool, like I got kind of close to the tape there. And there's somebody behind me. That Davis dude looks like he's behind me, actually. Oh, man, all right. So I might have some competition. I don't really remember. I've already raced. Yeah. I've raced again since this race and uh, kind of forgot what was going on in this race. Woo. But uh, I'm here, and we got some dude up here. I don't think he's in our race. But bam, hitting the freaking... Hitting the barriers. Sorry, I'm really tired. <laughs> and uh, going into the rodeo section. So, you know, they start out like four different races or three races during the race, but they start like a minute before each other. So like when, like Antonio started like a minute before us and then like I, for whatever reason, we I ended up catching him, but. So there's some dudes behind me, you can see him. I got a little squig right there and I slowed down, but uh, coming out of the turn hot and just really wanting to like give everything I have since the last lap. And I don't know what to expect, you know, I'm just trying to I go as hard as I can and like move up as fast as I can and as much as I can. So I'm just here going on the right side again trying to get the tight line. And uh, man, hitting all the turns. With nobody in front of you it's pretty easy to do without making a mistake. But yeah, just run in the, the race tape. There's a dude in the orange helmet. And I'm just like, no way, bro. This section, like, I feel like is like the hammer section. I think this is like probably the fastest I ever took it. I was just like, I was feeling it by the time I got to this part. For some reason, I feel like, I guess I was just feeling it in the race because I mean, I was going so hard. So, I mean, I averaged like 172 heart rate for 43 minutes with a max of 182. It was pretty gnarly. It said I needed to rest for three and a half days after this race. <laughs> I didn't do that, but um, I didn't go as hard this week. I got seven hours total and it's Thursday, which is still really good because I only tried to go six. But last week I got 12 and a half hours. And then the three weeks before that were averaged at four to five hours, but they're all like four, four and a half. Uh, but back to the race, here we go. Uh, last half of the race here, last half lap. Um, I'm not sure if this dude's in a race, and I'm not sure if I catch him, but we're gonna find out shortly. Going into this little like uphill, just barely any brakes, bam, riding it up, going on the line, and coming out of it. See how much more smoother that looks? 
it's just it's crazy how when you go through this over and over you just like you're breaking down you're breaking yourself down telling yourself you didn't do this good enough try it differently this time running up these stairs smooth that guy looking a little tired that was a pretty good uh mount though out of there and he's accelerating out and i'm just going around I'm like man i really want to just like pass this dude <laughs> I think he's in the Masters race, but I'm not sure. But uh, I'm definitely feeling it. I mean, going full gas a whole lap on this is, I mean, it's seven minutes of like full gas and then like slowing down and stopping. Like you gotta choose your gears wisely. And um, you know, that's one of the things I need to work on also, you guys, like, so I got a pretty good engine, but uh, handling and utilizing energy and picking the best like gears possible, that's huge. So here we go, here's Art here. This is Art from Lodi Freak Show, super rad dude. He's been coming out from the Mike Spikes rides. He's been out at Rodeo Cross, had a cool outfit last night, like in and out, like lubricant specialist, pretty funny. Um, and then just hitting on this thing, man, I was flying. Had to make sure we stay on the outside of the fence even though it was down, and then just go into this turn, this is smooth as I went through that turn. And I just decided to get this guy, and he's in the Masters race, and now I remember because uh, I passed him up here, but he wasn't in my race. But I was just, it was like really tight, but it, right here he seen me and he's like, oh yeah, go for it. So I was just trying to uh, make my moves go. I learned not to use a brake there. And then right here. Just hammering here, just trying to make ground seeing like who the hell are these guys so going around this turn and then right when I get around here I think that dude like slipped but I'm not sure I think I seen him, him slip but I didn't get it on camera but he was fine he actually got back up but uh, I don't remember seeing it the rest of the race but I'm uh, just really trying to take this uh, it's funny because when you're riding by yourself on this section it seems like it's so much more difficult than when you're riding with dudes but I mean, I'm moving, but uh, maybe it's because I'm going like, I'm actually going hard that <laughs> it's not as smooth. <laughs> but I was just like pedaling, 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 dude. High cadence flying through this. And then like right up here, we take the little S turn right here, bam. Just flying, dude, just crushing it. Just trying to like see if I can catch anybody else before the end of the race. And uh, hit that pretty good. It was a little jerky, but uh, that dude's chilling at the tent. I think he's just having a good time. And just making sure I get around this turn because, you know, like going really hard, you could just like lose your tire. There's somebody behind me. I don't know if it was a dude at the tent, but uh, I was like, I don't care. I'm going for it. So I'm going right here and there's a couple of dudes. And I think we got Robert here again. I seen Robert again, had to say what's up. Super rad individual. Him and his wife Valerie are just so great. And they've always been good to me. So I appreciate that, really great people. We've been teammates for a long time. Stoked to see them on Saturday and Sunday at the Jared Avino. And here we come, final lap. I heard someone say the guy was on me, but uh, yeah, here we go, bam. That's the finish, guys. Super rad race, thanks for watching. I'm exhausted. I was feeling it right now. I remember just like putting my bike down and just walking off. But uh, look forward to sharing the next race with you guys. Have a good night.